not a secondhand coat. I want a yacht, not a cheap little boat. I tell my daddy not to be depressed. All I need for happiness is the best. I want a dime and nothing else has appeared. And when it comes to men, you know how I feel. I want a real man. Give me a real man, you know what I mean. I want a real man. Oh, a real man, you know what I need. What's up? Welcome to Real Men. This is the magazine show for men, about men. We're going to find out what's going on with real men. You know, men, really. I'm your host, Tim Steves. Let's meet the panel, shall we? Ryan is here. Ryan Belleville. Hello, Tim. Good to see you, buddy. Nice to see you, too. Also joining us, Dwayne Hill is in the house. <laughs> Do you see that? John Dwayne. Oh, sorry, I had a pop. Noam Rosen is here with us today. Good Hello, to see you. Hello, Tim. How are you? Nice to see you, Noam. Freaking me out a little bit. Anne Marie Scheffler is also with us. Uh, good hi, to see you, Anne Marie. You too, Tim. The chef is in the house. And Tim Reichert's here. Good to see you, Timmy. Sorry to be so normal, but hi, Tim. Yeah, really. <laughs> everyone's just throwing me off with all their little intro bits. But that's how we're going to get this show started. Over to that same Tim Reichert with a commentary. Go ahead, buddy. Well, even though people are waiting till they're a little older and wiser to get married these days, divorce rates continue to rise. It seems that divorce is going to be with us so long as we continue to try and couple and have children, so we just have to learn to deal with it. Well, how does that work with men? Apparently, I'm supposed to feel sorry for the divorced man. Apparently, it's quite tough to be a divorced man in this day and age. Apparently, uh, suicide rates are up. It's much tougher than for them to get to know their children and bond with their children. And well, boo, hoo, 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 hoo. I'm sorry to seem unsympathetic here, but there are worse lots in life than being a divorced guy, okay? I know it's tough, but suck it up. That's what I want to hear. I don't want to hear you whining. I want to hear that you're going to suck it up and work twice as hard to raise your children and bond with your children and make sure that they become well-adjusted members of our society and not the little neglected monsters that many of you seem to unleash on us. <laughs> so I apologize for no sympathy, but uh, I'm not divorced. Don't ever plan on being divorced. That's it. Tim? Nice job. You really put a bow on that bad boy for us. Thanks, man. <laughs> so, Reichert's saying, suck it up and uh, deal. What do, you, what do you think, Noam? Uh, I agree. I mean, that's their job at that point, to suck it up and deal. Most guys want to get remarried pretty fast. I think that's, that usually happens. Yes, they do. And it's harder for women to get recoupled as... Exactly. It. Like, you've got it better of the two sexes, right? Yeah. Like, the guys get the, the couple's divorce at whatever age, the guy's got the better chance of getting back into something than the woman generally. Yeah, not especially if there's kids involved. Generally. Not to mention uh, a man's uh, income, in income increases by 10%, and a woman's income decreases by 23% after divorce. Like, well, every time? Listen to Sally well, Stack. So there, <laughs> so there is a job. <laughs> job. <laughs> Look at Anne Marie coming in with, like, Sally Stats. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm worried. 100% of the time, I usually say things that are very fascinating. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't plan on being divorced. No. You don't plan on getting into a car accident either, right? That's right. right. So when yeah. you get divorced, you can get blindsided. I think a lot of guys, I think they, I think a lot of people that are married, when they get divorced, they think, I can do this right, and they want to get right back into it. Sure. And, you know, you talk about the guys sucking it up. Let's face it, they're not having sex anymore. They've got to talk to some kids that they probably don't really, not too crazy about anyway. Oh, look, it's the one with the limp. Hey, Stevie. <laughs> oh, God. You know, you get that from your mother. Well, you know, <laughs> fathers, we, 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 we'll, eat, we'll eat our young without any rules. <laughs> okay, what that's funny from Dwayne Hill right now. Let's talk to Ryan Belleville. Don't have children well, with this man. Well, a part of me thinks it also <laughs> comes to the complex of, like, the fact that, all oh, my life didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, and now I'm totally, like, I'm not going <laughs> to continue trying anymore. And it seems like a lot... I don't think anybody's life turns out the way you want it to, and I think divorce is just another hurdle. You're like, ah, sh crap. <laughs> now I gotta keep going. And Isn't it also that, that marriage is totally different these days? I mean, it used to be it's a good thing to stay in the marriage and to be responsible to the wife and the kids. Now it's like it's really important that you're happy. And so you know, get out of that marriage if you're not happy. And, and they look totally different in the catalog. Like they they say they don't ever the photograph. <laughs> they say they don't. They say it's like Bangkok, outskirts of Bangkok at best. <laughs> <laughs> I think divorce rates continue to rise, even though what I said, we're getting married later and a little more intelligent when we do it, and we're getting married more for the right reasons now than we used to, as opposed to the pressurized, you know. But I think that the reason divorce rates rise is because it's also less of a taboo to get divorced, so it's easier Absolutely. to drop out of it. Hey, yeah. Noam, is it, is it a reason enough not to get married at all? Four, four out of ten is the number in Canada right now. Four out of ten marriages end in divorce. Four out of ten, mm -hmm. wow. Well, uh, I guess just roll the dice. I don't know. I mean, 
I'm not going to say people shouldn't get married. Uh, if people care about that kind of ten. thing, that's Four probably a good idea. I, like, I, I think just, you know, I, I would like to make a point now. Go ahead. Is that, is that I think our generation, if I may speak broadly, uh, is kind of a little more cautious. And our parents' generation were kind of like, after you go, you got to get married. If you're not married by the time you're like 23, 24, that's it. You're like, what's wrong with them? Are they perhaps a little light in the wrist and all? Well, let's, let's face know? it. 100 years ago, your life expectancy was 35 years old if you were lucky. And usually, you know, you, you died falling into a combine or something. <laughs> now we live to be 80. We constantly evolve. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. You're not the same person you were 10 years ago. We constantly evolve. And as we grow, the ideal relationship is a relationship where you can grow as a couple. But if it's not 100%, you kind of grow individually. Well, after that's 10 or 10 that's years. from a guy who says he's going to eat his kids. No, I said it's possible. All I said well, was they re reek of nutrition. They do. No. It's all that breastfeeding. I'm telling you, 100 years ago, people, people forget about the fact that kids have been spoiled for the last 100 years. 100 years ago, every 7-year-old was working in a mine. And they were food. And they were food. And that they was broke both time. their legs. It was like, Tommy's not going to make it. Push him into the barbecue. And that's the way it should be, kids that's working. The you know, yeah, back in my day. Well, you know, it, honestly, you? we've on. got a bunch of pretty, you know, Pretty soft, doughy kids now. I mean, yeah, can I go I'm back on track? Can I'm I go back on track? Yeah, Ryan, for help sec. us out, buddy. All right, well, the, the, you're talking about life expectancy. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, life, you talked about a lot of things, but life expectancy, <laughs> like, it's true, our life expectancy expands a lot. And I know a lot of people who have been, like, married in a good <laughs> relationship, and they've said, there's no way I would want to be with, I love this person, but if I live to be 130, I wouldn't want to be with one person for my entire life. Right. Like, that long. Good job. Nice segment. Despite all the, uh, yeah, whatever. Let's not revisit it. Good job. <laughs> that was just good job. When we come back on Real Men, we're going to be joined by Valerie Gibson. She's a sex columnist and an author. We'll get down to what's really going on. We're going to talk about... Uh, More sex. Well, you'll see. Come back. Welcome back to Real Men. How you doing? We're joined this segment by Valerie Gibson. She wrote this book right here, Cougar. It's a guide for the older woman dating a younger man. Thanks for coming in, Valerie. That's fine, Tim. I'm really enjoying it. Excellent. Well, let's throw it over to get this segment started. Throw it over to uh, Ryan Belleville with a little commentary. Go ahead, Ryan. Well, uh, what if there was no sperm? You know what I'm saying? Like, no sperm whatsoever. What if that had no purpose? I'm not talking about no sperm as in, wouldn't it be great if there were no more of those sticky situations? Or wouldn't it be great if us guys couldn't destroy every useful pair of athletic socks we own? I'm talking about no sperm in the full-on genetic sense. What if we didn't need it to impregnate a woman? And the fact is, now we no longer do. It's a, a doctor recently discovered that you can take genetic samples from any cell on a human body and impregnate an egg, making a... That, obsolete, making the sperm no longer, like this, these little guys who are floating around like little spermies, no longer have any, that was not an actual size of a sperm, by the way, folks, for those of you who are misled by the size of stuff on, if that was the size of a sperm, uh, sex wouldn't be very much fun come orgasm time to have a million giant things come out of you. I'm off track. But sperm in general, like, what can we do? Where's the fun in that? Because sex is the funnest part of procreating. I mean, on the upside, a test tube won't say to uh, a woman afterwards, hey, make me a sandwich, but you want some sort of intimacy. And men can also get an embryo implanted in them and carry a baby for a while. What comes next? Shipping off men to one island and women to another island, and then they can just live by themselves? <laughs> I fear it. Tim, what do you think? <laughs> I'm scared too, Ryan. Grab some couch. We're joined by <laughs> Valerie Gibson, sex columnist and author. What do you think about all that, Valerie? Are, oh, are we it redundant? Are men heart. just redundant it breaks now? my heart. I love men. I mean, and men are having a rough time, in my opinion. They're confused about relationships. They're having a rough time in the divorce side of it. They're, they're having a rough time, guys. That's a hard uh, old And now road. they're being told they, they're not needed. Did, the vibrator is better, you know, like, and doesn't, well, you know, really doesn't smoke afterwards, you know. <laughs> well, only if it quite goes wrong. But, um, you know, I think this is rather sad that, that this somehow, what is this, a campaign to get rid of guys? Oh, no, please don't. I mean, do there's nothing to like to a nice, around, huggy Dwayne? guy, you know, and the real thing. I think we need thing. a giant war. You know, a bunch of, sorry I'm late, honey, I was up to my neck.
back in blood. <laughs> I was killing, and then I, you know, I set fire to the corpses to signal an aircraft to drop more bombs. You know, I uh, think that's what it is, honestly. You know what I mean? All the men die in war. We don't want that. Well, that's sort of, no yeah, yeah, but then the women are all, the, but then the, you know, the men are left that's over. That's how all the trouble started. The women were left at home, you see, and all the men were dying in war. And then what did they do whilst they were at home? Well, they checked out what was left at home. And yeah. the marriages started women? breaking up, and divorces came. Maybe war is to blame for divorce. <laughs> mm, very interesting. <laughs> well, I agree with Ryan Belleville when he said that if sex didn't feel good, he wouldn't bother. And I agree with that. If it was just something that didn't feel good, I, I wouldn't bother. And oh, you're, yeah, you're when a, women say, I think you're a bit alone out of all the guys. You well, know, how do you know if it didn't feel good? <laughs> Gotta have know? my sex. Well, yeah. about, like um, adopting? Is that is that such a bad thing? Like, what are we gonna ship all the orphans away? Get rid of them? Get them out of sight? Because everybody can have a baby. Harvest like, them for their vital organs. Yes, and Ooh, you can eat them. Yes. Like, what's the like? Why do you, does everybody have to have a baby? Like. No, Everybody it's, it's very baby selfish around. to be thinking like, look, we're two women in love, not the two of us, but like, if, you know, let's be a woman. careful. <laughs> right. We're aware. But, but I could we're be. Aware. <laughs> two women in love wanting to have their own child. Like, that's so selfish. It's sort of like this North American concept that whatever money can buy, you know, we're going to do it. Like, we're going to make sure that we can have a baby that looks like me and my my wife. You Don't know? a couple of women have as much right to have a baby as any other couple, though? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, I there's think a lot they of, do. There's a lot of women, a lot of uh, babies in the world, like Ryan was saying, adoption. I just think it's it's going to the extremes. I mean, I'm maybe if I were in that situation, I would be feeling different. I don't think sperm's yeah. going to be replaced, though. I don't think we have to worry about sperm going out of fashion. It's a minty soon. paste that replaces sperm. <laughs> it's <laughs> spermintium. I think people will always... Fluoride. Mm, you know, that sounds great. I don't think it just... Oh, it's for women. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's not just for women. I won't swallow. <laughs> That's what you but said. But the point there... Don't you love oh, Dwayne, sure. Valerie? You've got right. spermintium I mean, on your chin. Bundle well, of love, you know, guy. the whole... Uh, Anne-Marie, I was just wanted to jump on that, because really, the whole thing too. a kid needs <laughs> is love. I mean, come on. And, mm -hmm. and I've known lots. My, my childhood was <laughs> one where there's rotten childhood. Let, I wish my dad hadn't been around, you know. Like, a lot of people have very bad times with male, female, uh, fathers, and mothers. So it's the love that counts. It's not the sex of the parent, in my opinion. Well, let's That's get, right. let's get back to the usefulness of the male in the post-sperm necessary world. Like, yeah. I... I Personally, I'm happy that we just all become just the sex slaves that we know you women want us all Ooh. to be in the end. I know. You don't, don't want to have sex with us anymore because you need to. You want to have sex because you want, want to. Want to? Yeah. Because yes. uh, once we're done, I guess we're done. What an idealist That's, you, know. you are, though. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm on your you're side. obviously not single. <laughs> That's right. Dating. <laughs> She's good. She okay, let's okay, uh, yeah. let's take a break. Let's take a quick That's break. Not and, Hold up now. Let's take a quick break and sell some stuff. When we come back, we're going to talk about long distance relationships with Valerie Gibson, who's, who's joining us. And as far as this topic, we hit the streets and asked some people. So let's find out. Have you ever had a long distance relationship? I did when I was like 18, 19. How'd that work? Uh, it worked good until we got together. It, it was good from far, you know, the letters and the phone calls, and then uh, go to see her, and it's a completely different story. So, you know, don't do it. Too much pressure on the visit? Too much pressure on the visit. Anxiety, performance anxiety. You can get it up when you're writing. It's hard to get it up in person. <laughs> Simmer, simmer down. Welcome back to Real Men. Uh, we're talking about long distance relationships this segment, and Valerie Gibson, author and sex columnist, has joined us. Valerie, what about the long distance thing? Can that they work? They don't work. They no. don't work. They, well, I know lots of people who try it and do it uh, quite well, but generally speaking, not, because it's a human nature to be close, to be intimate, to have a hug, to have a bad day and want someone to say, you poor thing, you know, and not kick you out the door, you know. But generally, you need somebody in your life, I think, close. Close for something to be developed, for a relationship to last, and, and even all, if you, you know, have a, a mouse in the house. You know, you can't phone your boyfriend to come over from Montreal. <laughs> if there's a mouse in your house right there. Oh, I like mice. Are you mice. speaking from experience, Anne Marie? You've <laughs> had a long gone. distance relationship. Yes, I have, and, and I think that there's some really good sides to it because uh, you know you you've got uh, your whole week to do a lot of work, and you can be very focused on your career or whatever. And then the weekend is like so great because they're waiting. And they, the, Titillation factor is high because you're know, waiting for so long, but mm -hmm. but the end it's a lot of work, and I don't know if it's uh, you well, know it's, it has to really be worth it. It's the dating in Millennium, though, you know. A lot of these relationships go one of two ways, as far as I know, isn't it? Like it's either you have this huge phone bill and mediocre sex with somebody when you're kind of at a dry period in your life, 
or you're just faking it. Oh, she's from France. <laughs> you haven't met her. She's beautiful, striking. <laughs> Aren't all long distance relationships though semi non monogamous? Like I think I yeah. think these people who they're they're sort of half kidding themselves that there's it's just yeah. the two of us through this. But meanwhile, when they get off the phone, what? I think. But, but you know what's happening? Look, what look do you at, think? Look at what today? if you're both the best? I'm the last to know these things always. <laughs> I didn't get the I took it so seriously <laughs> until it all fell apart. Yeah, but you were a little sweet pants, no? <laughs> Not everyone's <laughs> like you. She used to no, tell me about how serious you, you took know. it, and we used to laugh. We used to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't tell what she was saying because she was going rules, down on me. I think I think it's doomed. But but some people say that like having things like phone sex on a regular basis is what keeps it. Alive and people who've been in marriages where they travel a lot and they say that they have a healthy marriage because they actually don't see each other all the time. And they, they say when they, it keeps it fresh. It's Isn't quality time yeah. when they spend time together. Yeah, I'm naked. Learn to drive. <laughs> I'm still naked. Yeah. Yeah. Is phone sex enough to keep it going, Valerie? Okay. Well, Will phone no, sex save no. it? No, I like the real thing. There's nothing beats the real thing. But the thing I think that people have got to realize this is the new millennium in relationships. People do not stay in the same city and work in the same city all the time. Mm -hmm. They uh, one will get sent to New York or one will go to Japan or whatever. This is the movement of the global yeah, village. You, you can know. fall in love with a guy and fall yeah. in love with the new city too. You know and why not? And thanks to modern science, you can now actually have sex with a phone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can. Yeah. Like you can actually Ooh, plug into a computer. Yeah. And like get devices and then have actual like weird cyber sex. Like a Woody don't, Allen movie, man. It's don't great. beat yeah, the warm totally. flesh. I followed the cord all the way up his pant leg and then I walked away. <laughs> Listen to her, it doesn't beat it. The computers beat never beat the no. flesh. No, never, the never. Flesh, of course. Flesh. Never Pressing flesh. That's yeah. But when you're <laughs> having a long distance relationship, you really are focused and you know what the future is because usually you're, you're getting to a goal of being mm -hmm. in the same city. So that, you know, kind of weeds things out too. Yeah, and Marie, like you were saying, fall in love with a guy, he has to move to a new town, you fall in love with a new town, but what about your career? Shouldn't have to take a back seat. That's a big struggle that's, when this kind of stuff happens. That's where it happens. Yeah. That's yeah. where the breakup and comes. And that's usually the why you break up. Yeah. So we should stop having travel and we should stop having long distance <laughs> phone calls. And then we should have more sex, dear. Well, I, I, think that right. most, I think a lot of men do cheat when they're on like in a long distance relationship. They do cheat as much. And I can't say whether women are do or not, but I think guys they think do. they do. Like I think, and like they're like, oh, my girlfriend's away, and they're constantly thinking, oh man, if I was there, I'd be cheating. So uh, they, so it's they get a projection really of your own hidden fears and desires. Yes, yeah, the old thing, Valerie, isn't it? As soon as the guy's worried about you cheating, that means he's been cheating. <laughs> yes. That's how it is, and of course the women cheat just as much as the guys do. What? What? <laughs> well, the men have to be cheating with someone else. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> it's true. No oh, I like Darn Valerie. Cool. She's so pro oh, sex. Out. Everybody <laughs> just sex, sex, sex. That's my. Yeah, yeah Valerie had her way. Really We'd all nice, just be it? off doing it, <laughs> like getting our meal cheap? slid under the door. Totally yeah. Everyone's getting out of their car and having yeah. sex. <laughs> this is uh, it's chaos. It's nice. It's watch that. Yes. That's got to be cold. That's a puddle. <laughs> Noam, are you are you in defense of the long distance relationship? Is that what I'm getting from no, you? No, no, no. I long distance. I had one. It didn't work. You know, she lived in Montreal and then she moved to New York City and. I used to go down on weekends, and it's, it's impossible. A huge impossible. language barrier. I don't speak any <laughs> French. I assume you're saying something dirty. Well, there are Anglos in Montreal. <laughs> what? I know. What? Next thing you're going to tell me, there's Ethiopians. And I could speak French, Dwayne. <laughs> and kiss that way. No. Mm. Dirty. But no, it just didn't work. Yeah, we tried. Yeah. I think there's a consensus. They don't work. Yep. Okay, oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Right. Not for long. Not for they long. don't Let's work. As Valerie says, just I, have let's sex. Be fair. I think we yeah. figured it out, Timmy. Let's go to break. We're going to come back with one more segment with Valerie Gibson. Long distance relationships, they don't work no matter how good your vocabulary over the phone. We're coming right back. <laughs> We're back. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. We're talking about doing it on the show today. And we're joined by Valerie Gibson. Thanks for coming in, Valerie. Thank you, I Ken. think I think it, during the break, Noam had a question for you. Have you got that ready to go? Yeah, well, I just wanted to ask, because I know that uh, with the whole Viagra thing, there's been a, a slight rise in STDs among seniors. Uh -huh. yeah. And I wanted to know, oh. not that you are a senior, of <laughs> yes. course, but uh, the statistics pertain to seniors. And I wanted uh -huh. to know if you know of any wild sex orgies taking place among the elderly. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty, let me tell you. Right. That is, I get loads of letters on this. Particularly, the man comes running home, the older man with a bottle of Viagra. Yeah, let's go. And she says, forget it. 
<laughs> you know, after we've been, we haven't had sex for 15 years. Right. You know, and now you you want sex, you know, no way. And this is a big problem. The guy's standing there with his bottle of Viagra. So you have to send her out for orgasm creams. They're the new thing. <laughs> I mean, this, for what, what is, or, what or, is or, going on, you, you know? What are the orgasm, <laughs> tell us about those, yeah. Valerie. Oh, orgasm yeah, creams. orgasm creams. We're yeah, the, the hottest, latest thing. Yeah. It all comes via the Viagra thing. Larginine, it's called. Uh, um, I think it's an acid of some oh, kind. Oh, because the it, reacts it works on, on the Yeah, you rub it in. Yeah, the it women rub it in it and work? it heightens you well yeah it's not bad it knocks you know? out for four hours while you go to a prostitute right <laughs> <laughs> and then you have an orgasm and you wake they wake up and go do we do it you go I was, I was fantastic. <laughs> you were, there was great. a great whole thing, but you might have an STD tomorrow. You passed out when you had that last, that was the petit death. <laughs> the, the, yeah, petit the, death. Petit mort, yes, petit right. mort. But I think anything that helps, if people always have this idea that sex is dead in midlife and later, it's rubbish and it isn't. But if there is problems, anything that helps and makes uh, people enjoy each other more and have any better pill, relationships. Lubricants, okay, any? so how about asking, uh, or yeah, getting a younger guy who doesn't have as much sexual experience as the woman, Mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, perform really well, to do really well with the whole, you know, uh, foreplay stuff. You Four please play. him Four? thoroughly yeah. first. I always find that. If you please really? him and make him totally relaxed and joyful and blissful, he'll do anything well, don't you want. Valerie too much. Yeah. for prime yeah. minister. He falls asleep. <laughs> he, he falls asleep. No, don't don't say something. Oh, he, he falls asleep. asleep. If he falls asleep, yeah. you've done it right. Then he's not so young you enough. don't realize that <laughs> sex should be it. rapid <laughs> and wrapped up immediately. <laughs> when oh, I said hard yeah. and fast, I didn't mean time length. Valerie, speak to what we were talking about during the break, about why people are having such a hard time these days, particularly with the idealistic world <coughs> we're in. I... Oh, yes, the high expectation level, as I call it. Yeah, everybody wants perfect sex. They want absolutely everything. They want the multiple orgasms. They want this, they want that. Oh, God, I had a guy then who wanted come to multiple me. orgasms. You know, performance anxiety. <laughs> Women are getting it now. But sometimes it's, you know? it's like, okay, just to have, I don't think people expect, like, especially guys, but actually having sex and not having an orgasm. You know, but pleasing, actually pleasing the woman, but not having an orgasm. Yeah, is like, men oh, fake what? it, you know. Men fake it. Sex they, involves. They won't admit it, but they do. And I wrote a whole column about that, and I had floods of letters from fake guys saying, yeah, wow. we Yeah, we it. always should have an orgasm. <laughs> That's you know? here. So the everybody's faking it. We What's going seconds. on here? This well, because it's all in your head, and if you can get it in people's head that everything's enjoyable, <laughs> yeah. that's as good relax. as it being enjoyable. No, relax, relax, relax. That's the whole thing. Not take I'm relaxed. Like what? I'm relaxed. <laughs> you were so right. Maybe Don't take it this. so seriously. You need some orgasm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. I want to thank Valerie Gibson. <laughs> <Gitsen. laughs> Thanks so much, Valerie, for coming in. Thanks, Valerie, for coming in. You're welcome. I really appreciate it. Hey, can we all agree that when it comes to oral sex, it's about the enthusiasm? Tune in next yes. time on Real Men, where men get real. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.